Okay, so while you were out playing golf, I was doing some research. And uh oh. I, and I, I believe that found out, I couldn't understand what the holdup is. If, if the Browns want Jadavian Clowney, just go sign him. They got the money and all that stuff. What's holding them back? Well, what's holding them back is apparently he, even though he was getting offered more, more from Cleveland than anybody else, he apparently didn't want to come here. But that's not what I think I got out of this, uh, this uh, research. And that is that I think I found out what the analytics is all about. Why, why uh, Deep Podesta is so important and why all these uh, new young coaches, the new wave of coaches. Tell, tell me if I'm, I'm on the right track here. There's a new stat out. You know how I, how I love in baseball, they make up stats and, yeah. try, and yep. they, they'll find out that Babe Ruth wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> There's a thing called a disruption rate. Have you ever heard of it? Um, no, I haven't actually. I, no, that's. A, well, I know I'm a, I'm familiar with next gen stats, but I don't read it. I don't okay. follow that on a daily basis. So you can see there, it's the it's the combined total of hurries, pressures, or sacks with the only one counting per play, uh, divided by the number of pass snaps. So you know, we're going to take a look at at the top ten guys, and I think we'll be able to show you why it's uh, why uh, the uh, analytics are so important so that tells you what it is all right number one in according to the disruption rate uh here is a guy by the name of miles garrett which is pretty impressive uh, and it, it's also pretty impressive since he missed the last six games but his disruption rate is the best in the nfl he registered a pressure of on 17.1 percent of his dropbacks in 2019 uh, which was the highest percentage posted by a player since the 2016 team. He also became one of the just three players to post a pressure rate of 12% or higher in the last three seasons. The other two, Aaron Donald and Von Miller, and I think most people would think those guys were um, right at the top of the class. So if you go by the more than just the eye test, and you have this test here with the disruption rate, it falls right in, and we'll find it out as we go down the list. Zadarius uh, Smith is uh, number two from Green Bay. Robert Quinn, Dallas is number three. Nick Bosa is in. Joey Bosa is not. Josh Allen of uh, Jacksonville. Aaron Donald of uh, the Rams. Shaquille Barrett uh, from Tampa Bay. Dante Hightower uh, from uh, uh, New England is, is number eight. So you see we're skipping number nine. You know why? That belongs to a uh, Cleveland Browns player. And we're going to show you who that is. How about that? Adrian Claiborne huh. is number nine. So uh, And number ten is, uh, is Von Miller. So if you go along with the, uh, the, um, the theory, the analytic theory, they already got their Genevieve and Clowney, right? I mean, here's a guy you don't think about, the additions the Browns made this past year. You don't even think about that, but this, this thing called the disruption rate tells you why he's up there and some other players are still on the, still, uh, on the hook looking for a job. Yeah, and I think, listen, I know Olivier Vernon you know, ha had a knee injury last year and, and was less than what we thought he would be. Right. But if I'm them and he's signed for, you know, this year, I, I want to see whether I can get that out of him on a one-year deal. And that's why I, I think you have to look at when you put these teams together, how much money you're going to spend at different position groups. And we all know that Miles Garrett is going to break the bank. I mean, he should. Uh, there's no way this team should or could justify letting him go. Um, so I'm fine with them not signing Clowney, given the the other the talent around Garrett right now. All right, let's take a look at what Nick Shook uh, says about Adrian uh, Claiborne, and uh, we'll find out this might be the reason the Browns aren't going whole hog on uh, uh, getting uh, Jadavian Clowney or anybody else for that matter. According to Nick Shook of NFL.com, Claiborne has more sacks in one game in 2017 than he had all in 2019, but that only illustrates how incomplete sacks are as a stat. Claiborne was an effective uh, player for the Falcons' defense last year by making most of the pass-rushing snaps he was afforded, recording 35 quarterback pressures on just 282 pass rushes. The only, the only problem, uh, Bud, is you, you can throw in these new stats and all, but you know, we've talked about this in baseball. Most people know what a 300 batting average is and 100 RBIs and, and, um, and so on, and 35 home runs. We don't know yet what these numbers mean. It, it's talking about Claiborne, according to Shook, and he says it's, uh, um, you know, he, he puts out a number. We don't know if that's good, bad, or how that compares to other players. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, some people in this town will have a bad taste in their mouth about analytics and about these kinds of stats. 
But I, I'm not against finding a different way to look at production. And um, it, it worked in baseball to, you know, it certainly had worked for the Oakland A's um, who had a limited payroll. That's, you know, limited payrolls aren't the problem in the NFL. So you could question, you know, whether you're, the need is as great to look at it, you know, a little differently. But um, I think these are smart people in this front office. And to, to the point of your question, Les, with your opening comment, which I thought was good, who would be to blame this year? It can't be Freddie Kitchens. And I think it's everything is going to fall in the lap of Paul D. Podesta this year. I mean, this is a guy who who has, you know, risen to, you know, top decision maker in this in this organization and a guy that, that Jimmy Haslam has clearly looked at and said, Maybe I made a mistake in not following his advice a few years ago when I got off the roller coaster and um, got rid of, you know, Sashi and, and disrupted. Talk about disruption factor. Huh. Jimmy Haslam's got a pretty good one. Yeah. But boom, boom. Well, um, well. So, I, I, you know, I think that Dee Podesta is the guy now that is, you know, is certainly steering the organization. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does. And, and look how many... Regime changes. He's he's made it through and still has has worked his way to the top. Although now, yeah. he if that's the case, he's he doesn't mind giving other people the the credit the credit for what's going on here. You don't see Deep Podesta's name all that often, even though he's got no. he's got seniority. 